Midweek insights for you, Matt Noyce. We are going to do the deep dive in meteorology. By the way, uh, if you are looking for something quick and easy, if you don't want to have to sit here and watch the whole video, this isn't for you. <laughs> You're looking for your Noyce's notes. One degree outside today. Danielle posted that this morning. It does go all the way through tomorrow morning. This is for those of you who love the meteorology. What are we diving into in this video? Detailed storm expectations, including a very detailed snow map. This storm a little different from many. We'll talk about that. It's kind of fascinating. An early season cold shot that comes in and the mountains are just going to keep snowing into the weekend all right grab our app it's the best way to keep track of the storm and get our videos on the home screen uh it is noises one degree outside weather you'll find it on both the app store and google play picked up a little snow last evening carried all the way off lake ontario we had a mid-level disturbance that came by and picked some of that up so western mass the mass connecticut border northeast connecticut got not only a coating some spots got a quick inch that came out of that too and that's not going anywhere with the cool temperatures around for a while all right water vapor a great way to trace disturbances in the atmosphere and here is our disturbance big swirl in the atmosphere dropping down to the upper great lakes that is the atmospheric energy that's on the way i can switch things over and show you the energy we'll plot it in yellows and oranges and reds there it is watch what happens as this thing drops southeast or really races southeast during the course of tonight into tomorrow boom you got one round of energy that comes through during the overnight tonight notice by let's say 10 o'clock tomorrow morning it's already racing east so your heaviest stuff is done by like eight nine o'clock in the morning tomorrow but you still have a ton of energy off to the west and with it a lot of cold air high in the sky it represents what we call instability we talk about that with summertime thunderstorms same type of thing that comes in tomorrow afternoon to early evening and that's why we think that even after the bulk of the precipitation is gone in the morning there'll still be some bursts of rain and snow that'll pop up into the afternoon and early evening leaving a few new slick spots tomorrow evening before the cold air just starts rushing in for thursday night and friday here's that fascinating part of the storm so this is the cold front the storm is wrapping itself up as the storm continues to mature and becomes an older storm that's been around a while it wraps the cold more underneath its belly that becomes an important factor for us let me swing things over to temperature at about 6,000 feet up in the atmosphere okay so you can see there's the colder shot of air at first it seems very normal it's coming in from the northwest but as the storm gets stronger and wraps itself up, it wraps that cold air under its belly. And look what happens by Thursday morning. We are bringing cold air in on a southwest wind. That's what's different. You say, all right, what's the big deal about that? The big deal about that is we saw this happen two weeks ago with a storm that hit upstate New York. It ended up snowing into Connecticut. The heavier snow was on the southwest side of the storm. So we've got heavier snow forecast in northern Connecticut than we do in coastal Maine. And that's, that's exactly the reason why, because the cold air comes in from the south and west. I won't belabor this evening's arrival of the snow. As I mentioned, Danielle has covered that in the 24-hour forecast and one degree outside today. But let me slow things down as we get to the overnight. You can see the rain snow line dancing near 495, generally right along it or just outside of it. But notice between 4 and 7 a.m. what's happening tomorrow. We've made a, snow, a change to snow in northern Connecticut. That's the colder air in a southwest wind. We keep the southwest wind and make a change to snow inside of 495 down to Boston between four and seven in the morning. You don't get a lot, but it still is somewhat fascinating that we make that change to snow from the south and west. Again, last to do it along the coast of Maine because the southerly wind for you is coming in off the ocean, which is still warm. Of course, we never really do it on the Cape. Here we are at midday tomorrow. You've broken it up into just these leftover snow showers, but I wouldn't say just these leftover snow showers. I think a better way to say it is these bursts of rain and snow that'll still be around in the afternoon to the early evening. Remember, the sun sets early which means as we still contend with some of these all the way to sundown, DPW, DOT crews, you'll need to get back out there. Parking lot folks who do that stuff, you very well may have some brand new spots that turn slick heading into your Thursday evening because of those leftover bursts that have to come through. Total amounts, you can see the pattern. Yes, the farther north and west to some extent in the colder air, but also the farther south and west you go, the greater our forecast snow totals. Hills of northwest Connecticut, hills of northeast Connecticut, elevation plays into this as well. So you've got a few different factors. Pioneer Valley, less than the hills either side, right? The lighter blue, you can line it up with the legend, two to four inch snow. You get to 495, you're about an inch of snow. And again, a lot of that's on the grass, but that may still be slushy on the pavement. So treatment likely to be needed here. And then the coating inside of 495, most coming in that 4 to 7 or 4 to 8 a.m. time frame on Thursday as you make that flip on a southwest wind. But it's not like the temperature comes crashing down at that point. So you're not going to freeze it up. You're just going to make the change over to some snow. Uh, six inches, perhaps, when we get not only in a northwest mass, look at the hilly terrain around Worcester County, central Massachusetts, Sarah, uh, when you get out uh, toward the Quabbin. 
This is where we're talking about what may be on the order of six inches of snow or a little higher in the high terrain. Speaking of higher in the high terrain, let's take a look at central and southern Vermont. Some of us get into that purple, which is eight to 12 inches. And this is just, by the way, take a look at the time through the end of Thursday. I think that Thursday night, you keep snow in the mountains. Uh, Danielle and I are thinking that you're going to double your amounts in some of the northern mountains over the rest of the weekend, believe it or not. So as you start to come farther north, still that elevation dependency. Again, the light blue, a big wide two to four. The darker blue, more like a four to six, probably on a four inch side. There's not a ton of moisture with it. Then you get into some of the mountains across the presidentials. You do pretty well at eight to 12. Same thing when you get into northern greens, eight to 12. And again, that's into Thursday evening. I would say, let's say someplace like Stowe or Jay picks up six by Thursday evening, you'll get 12 by the end of the weekend. You're going to double it uh, over the course of Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You come into Maine, same thing where you get that you know, coastal Maine picking up less with the wind off the ocean. The farther north you go through the turnpike and then points north, the more snow you pick up overall. And the same thing happens when you come into northern Maine. We're very much into the cold air, but there's still an elevation dependency that goes on here from Millinocket, frankly, all the way up to the Canadian border for that matter as well. So that's an overview on snow amounts. In terms of precipitation, it's actually kind of even. A lot of us end up with probably somewhere around a third to a half an inch. There is more that comes onto the Cape, and then the wind is going to kick up. So the part about the wind is once you get those bursts of rain and snow to come through Thursday evening, that's the cold front. And we talked in insights early in the week how there was a piece of North Pole energy that came into this, and that really is going to open the door to the cold. So here's the cold wind coming in Thursday evening. This helps you a little bit in the road conditions in terms of the fact that it's like a natural blow dryer but your temperature is on the fall and that's why where there is some fresh moisture going into sundown it would freeze where there's no fresh moisture the old stuff would be drying out friday is still windy it is cold we'll look at the feels like forecast overnight thursday night the wind chill going down to the teens single digits and even for a few of us below zero and heading into friday the wind chill at the warmest time of the day about 20 in southern new england and more like 10 to 15 when you come across the north so really chilly stuff that comes in on friday again in terms of the evolution going into the weekend if you're curious about that you've still got the snow squalls that will be happening in the mountains thursday evening friday snow showers may abate a little bit across the mountains but we've got more disturbances that still need to come through we're thinking as we head into saturday a lot of northern new england starts out with snow showers over the course of the morning but particularly of course in the mountains some of that is fed by moisture off the great lakes and you can see by saturday late day and evening that starts to wane but guess what Another disturbance comes in on Sunday, more accumulating snow that comes during the day on Sunday across northern New England. Southern New England is right on the edge of it. You might be able to squeeze out some snow showers or mixed snow and rain showers on Sunday, but probably not as big of a deal. We'll keep you posted on that. Meanwhile, the day-by-day -day maps, for those of you who like that, Thursday we're talking about actual temperatures that are running about 35 to 40. Thursday night we looked at the wind chill. The actual temperature drops down to about 20 to 25 in a lot of spots. And Friday, you don't go very far in terms of high temperature plus that blustery wind. Friday night, ooh, my goodness, are we cold. We may get actual temperatures in St. Johnsbury down near zero on Friday night. Remarkable stuff here. And then Saturday, expect your high temperature in some place like St. Johnsbury only be about 14. The farther south you come, you're closer to 30. When you get around Boston, that's still one cold start to the weekend. Sunday, not as cold. And again, you may get some of those mixed rain and snow showers that start coming into play with snow across the north. A reminder, if you want to sport some of our One Degree Outside swag, we invite you to do it. Swag.OneDegreeOutside.com. We thank you always for checking out this deep dive. I hope you like it. I hope it uh, at least kind of enlightens you a little bit more about what's going on with the storm. We'll keep you posted, of course. Danielle and I will see you at OneDegreeOutside.com.